So today we have again with us Clig Ackley. You'll remember her from a previous session where she was speaking about diet and how following a very healthy and I would say quite a strict diet for her own well-being, it's keeping her so alive and so active. So welcome again. Thank you. you. Lovely and to be here with you. Great. Yeah, it's good. And Clig is going to speak to us today about garbage, garbage <laughs> enzyme. And you'll see here some of the things that we are using here at the Yarra Valley Living Centre. And Clig is going to introduce you in how to make this wonderful enzyme that can replace a lot of chemicals in your home, in your kitchen, in your bathroom. So Clig, it's wonderful because how long have you been using this enzyme? Two years now. Yeah. And what difference has it made? Well, it's not just for me, it's also been about the environment and about the people that I live with because I share um, maybe by <laughs> a little bit of coercion. <laughs> um, I've been sharing the, the enzyme product because I've just seen so many kind of miracles that this product can offer us. And one in particular, when I was gardening a lot um, last year, I used it as a pesticide. We had an infestation of the aphids came, like literally as soon as the buds came on the rose bushes, all the aphid eggs started to just go crazy. And I'm like, oh no, we're gonna lose all our roses, you know, because then you've got a bloom, the rose will bloom, but then you've got all these little holes in it, right, where they've eaten. So I use the enzyme product for that. I've used it for healing uh, deep cuts. I've used it for um, for the for the body, uh, washing the hair and the face and like that. Um, and then myself, not in particular, but others who have who I live with have use the product and they have sensitive skin and they've not yet been able to find a proper product so that their their skin doesn't react to the um, the soap contents so the enzyme just is really useful in that kind of a way and that's actually um, I'll talk about it a little bit more later but that's actually one of the reasons why I was very interested to create uh, this product and also here at the Yarra Valley Living Centre, we are choosing to use organic vegetables when we can. And fortunately, there is a lot of supply and it's not too expensive. But when you're not able to find the organic vegetables, you're using the enzymes. Yes. So this is another thing that really sold me on the use of the product was um, a very small amount of the enzyme um, product put into a say for example that you have a basin the size of this table then you put um, just a very small like one capful of the enzyme in the water and it uh, takes all of the pesticides out of the fruit and the vegetables and not only that but the the biggest selling point for me was the apples because there are products out there that you can use that are organic However, they won't remove the pesticide that some people use, some farmers use, that go actually inside the, the peel. And this product takes out that um, pesticide from inside. Of course, I'd want to know how you know it's really taking the pesticide out. Right, so uh, this is again uh, one of the, because I come from a science background. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, mm, well, how can you say that? Right, it's my friends had told me this um, pro about this product. And so they have done research in, it's been over the scope of 40 years that from Taiwan that this, uh, do two doctors now actually have been working on this enzyme research. And they went to China and they went to a, a lab that is specific for, regi for uh, registering, uh, anyway, to, 
Certifying? Certifying, yes. Mm -hmm. If a if the pesticide or the D pesticide product really works. And they they put the enzyme in the product, they waited for 45 minutes, and then they tested the water and they tested the fruit. And the fruit had zero level on the readings. And you see it on the screen, you can see that the their um, reading, their meter, it said zero. And they said that they have not even themselves any of the products that they've used. They've never, they've gotten down to maybe 10% removed or 20% removed, but zero, like all of it removed, they haven't come. So I'm like, well, this is really good because organic food is very expensive. And if you get, especially things like that, we eat a lot of like apples, carrots, uh, potatoes, and those are foods that are commonly have um, heavy pesticides because they want them to grow. You know, a lot of fertilizer used that have, um, you know, these chemicals inside and the fruit just absorbs it. So it's really good. And they talk about the Dirty Dozen, which includes the things that are so good for us, like berries. Um, how is it working with them? Right, so it does the same thing. It just, you put it in, you soak the berries and then uh, wait for the 45 minutes. Uh, 45 minutes would probably be the maximum. Um, you know, you could take it out after about half an hour or so. It's not like hard and fast, but it, I would soak it for at least a half an hour. And um, this is such a miracle of nature, really, because you say like, oh my God, then all these pesticides are in the water. But actually what happens is that the the enzyme denatures the, like the, 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 the pesticide. Mm. So it, that in that way, it like removes it. Wow. So it denatures it. It's it like take, takes it down to the mo molecular level and just like yeah. changes it so that it doesn't cause any harm then. Because we're on boar water here and, you know, we've got organic gardens or at least, you know, it's um, pesticide free. And you're saying that that also is helping our water. Yes, because this enzyme product is very um, high in nitrogen. And this bacteria, it, that it, um, the bacteria produces the enzyme, which is why it's called enzyme. They, in Asia, they, it's literally translated into English as garbage enzyme, but we prefer the, <laughs> the, 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 the term, the more kind of friendly term for the ears is bioenzyme. So, yeah. So this bioenzyme actually um, has um, the property of when you at, throw, put the water into the drain and then it goes into the, throughout the septic tank, and then that goes down into the river. And then we get that water back through the bore tanks and it cleans the system all the way. So Sounds it's a bit like a miracle. It is kind of like a miracle. <laughs> One just has to use it to notice yeah. it. But yes, and I've seen actually over a period of about a month, um, we were using it for um, our laundry we were using it for the dishes. We were using it for our our personal care. And all of that water was going through the septic tank. And then that water was going into um, the area called the dam. And you know that um, foamy, white foamy thing that can get built up quite uh, mm. thick. And it was there before we started using the enzyme. And then after about a month, then you didn't see any in the water at all and that's coming from a place where there's very little uh, rainfall so it wasn't that the rain was coming and you know getting rid of it so that's another you know really useful examples of the enzyme and i know you're going to demonstrate but just going back to the berries mm. um then after you've taken them out of the enzyme does that enzyme not have any ill effect on our because we're eating it so yeah it doesn't it's um it's just as i say it it denatures the so all of the anything that would be bad would be inside the water now mm. not on the 
on the fruit. And certain things like what I do with the berries is I, I drain them in the colander or the sieve, and then I put them on a, either a paper towel or a, just to dry them off. Um, there is, really isn't any residue, but it's just that I like the berries to be dry. And you don't need to rinse it afterwards? Some people do, but I, not I, it's not necessary because, and I think, and especially if you're on a water tank system like we are, and some of our retreat centers, they have to actually pay for their water. Mm -hmm. So you don't, you want to use as less water as possible. Wonderful. Such a holistic approach to it all. <laughs> so I think we'd like to see how to make it. Okay. So you've got so many interesting Good. things here. I don't know, interesting, but they really <laughs> look like garbage to me. <laughs> but it's great to be able to reuse and uh, recycle. So this is wonderful. So I'm going to hand over to you now to show us how to make it. Okay, very good. All right. So some people are saying, okay, so what can I put in? All right. So um, my personal preference is to use 60% um, from citrus fruit because I happen to like the smell from it. And look, here's an interesting thing you can put in. This, this is a lily that died. Uh, so we put in the flower in. Um, and then some lemons that weren't really very nice. Uh, the things we, and leaves are okay too. I put in some mint leaves that were not so good to use, some uh, cabbage, um, broccoli, and avocado skin. And here I just want to point out that um, you must be very careful not to add the paper inside because it will de deter the bacteria from doing its um, little job. And also no tea at all, no loose tea, no tea bags, and no um, coffee because those are all actually refined um, products. So you have to have things that are completely natural and unused. And here's even a grape, grape stem. through how to make this wonderful product. So we're going to use one ratio, one part of dark brown sugar, and then three parts of the food scraps. And then we're going to fill up your, you're going to fill up the container till 20% is remaining. So that's about more or less 10 parts of water. The first thing you want to do is you want to um, you want to dissolve the sugar in the water. So make sure that it's quite dissolved. Use this stick and and stir it up. And you can use any container. I've got an example of a cereal uh, box here. You can as long as it's got the lid and it's tight. Okay. Even this can work as well. Um, it's a pitcher and you can close it so that there's no air. Uh, people have actually used milk jugs. You can use an, an old a milk jug um, and you can use uh, just a plastic container as well if you want. It must be plastic because the gases from the fermentation process will expand the vessel that it's in and people actually have had explosions. <laughs> uh, it's actually kind of fun because when I've made it, um, I've had uh, three big 20 liter containers. So I was making like 60 liters at a time. And because it does take three months to go through the process properly. Um, and only in the first month do you need to be paying attention to it? And again, what the reason is because of this, um, the gaseous nature of the enzymes. So you'll have gases and you need to release those gases. So if you have a really tight lidded container, like say for example, this is a screw on lid, you only need to just, you don't have to take the whole thing right off. You can just unscrew it and then that will release the air and then you just turn it back up again. You put a date on it. 
and then you give it a little bit of this, it's this size container, you can just give it a bit of a shake and then just release the, the enzymes. Just put the lid back on and give it a little shake, just so that the, because the top part of the enzyme, um, as you can see from the from the picture, the, the the fruit material and the vegetable material will want to rise up to the top, and eventually it will sink down. Um, but in the beginning time, it's um, rise up to the top. So you want to make sure that the top layer is also going to be covered with water so it can do its process. Um, so it's very simple. It takes three months for it to finish. First month is you're actively every day paying attention to it, which is another reason why you need the label on. So you need to know when the second month is coming. Second month, um, it's again just left. And then the third month, after the third month is finished, then you can um, decant, as we say. So then, and these, the, I wouldn't, I would suggest not to throw out your veggie scraps because if you have any plants around, you can use them to bring back to life uh, if they're a little bit sickly or anything, just by using just a, um, say for example, this is um, one of the pieces that was remaining after three months. Um, I just take maybe half of this piece for a pot that would be about this size and just put it, uh, just bury it a little bit into the soil and then they, there will be some bacteria remaining on here and it will start to give nutrients to the soil and then your plant will come miraculously back to life. So wasn't that amazing? It is a bit of a miracle. Mm. <laughs> and I've been using it. So I know it is like a miracle, so very, very good. But I want to just, again, be very clear about the recipe. Mm. So I just wasn't that clear about the water. I got it one part is sugar, three parts is the organic matter. And organic doesn't mean it has to come from organics, it means natural. So right. no processed ingredients right. no nothing cooked nothing cooked yeah so natural and then the water 10 parts water right so that's 14 and then you have to keep 20 percent of space so that it's got place to bubble and ferment there have i got that right yes that is right so yeah. we've got our recipe right. and these are the products right. that you've and just to make just yeah. to a note on the, um, the, the water, you'll have to make sure that when you are measuring that your container is going to be big enough. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that you've got that little space that remains because yeah. it'll be problematic. Because <laughs> I've been making it with the citrus mm. and I also was very aware not to forget to take the lid off because it does bubble and it can burst. Don't get scared. No. <laughs> but you do have to remember to take the lid off and uh, make sure that you let out, just like anything else that you know that bubbles. Right. So at the end of your three months, you'll and then you decant it. So I found the easiest way to do this is to get myself um, a quite a large funnel and a piece of cheesecloth or an old tea towel, perhaps. Mm -hmm. And then you just pour it through that, and then it's a lot easier to work with. When you decant it, you always want to leave space at the top. And actually, all of the products that, like I just made this one a few days ago, this is a floor cleaner. I have left space at the top because if I haven't used this in a couple of months, then it will still be active even though there's floor cleaner in there. It won't be, of course, very active, but it will there be some activity. And this actually is very, um, in Japan, they use this bacteria for, um, for spa facial, facials and it's very expensive apparently. <laughs> anyway. So when you're saying that you use the cheesecloth in a funnel, mm. so that's to strain out, there still would be some vegetable 
Yes, very, very fine um, yeah. vegetable matter. And then you right. put that in the pot plants or in your yeah. garden. Yeah, you yeah. can say that you can actually just um, put it on a tray and put the vegetable matter on a tray, just let it dry, and then just put it in a plastic bag anytime you need it for something. You can just take a piece of it out, uh, rehydrate it if you want, or just um, stick it in the soil. It depends on what you need, what you need it for, but you can um, recycle it in that way again. And have you added any of the shop bought ingredients in here? Like, yes. So now it comes to what I do with it. So say, for example, I wanted to um, clean my shower stall or clean the bathtub. So I take um, my already existing cleaner and I add, um, so for example, this is 500 mils. So I take 50 mils of the bathroom cleaner and I take 50 mils of the enzyme and then I fill it up to about here and then with the with water and then um, they recommend that you leave it overnight just to you know really denature it but it's up to you you can use it straight away if you want give it a little bit of a stir and then you can then it's ready to then it's ready to go why does it need some of the well, products or products well, you uh, personally, it's it's up to you. Personally, I like the fragrance, ah. so that's why I use. You don't, and also like say for example the um, shampoo. I like. I'm used to the foamy, you know, lather like this on my hair. So you won't get that if you use the enzyme with the water. So you don't need it. It's a personal preference to add a little bit of fragrance, a little bit of texture. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, like for example, it, it will it will clean your dishes very well without the dish soap. But then people are used to little cleaning soap. their dishes with the lather, you know, like that. So you know, it's so not necessary. Not but necessary, but it can be. Yeah, and also if you've already got sort of um, toxic chemicals, even if you've got the green chemicals, um, it's, um, it's still chemical. So this way I'm making it entirely organic and anything that I'm putting down the drain that I'm using, it's going to be clearing the system. So even though this one says it's um, like environmentally friendly, it's only just a little bit more friendly than say, for example, a chemical, a straight up chemical would be. And uh, now because of COVID, people are using a lot of sanitizer. Mm. So can you use this alone instead of sanitizer? You can. Um, only, pro only problem with that one would be like, say for example, we can, oh, that's the glass, um, this one. So we could use this bot spray bottle, for example, and we've done this actually in uh, a couple of our retreat centers. Um, we fill it with, um, this one would be 50 mils of the enzyme, 50 mils of, of hand soap, and then water. And then you just spray it. Because there's no alcohol in it, it's going to take some time before it will dry. So that's the disadvantage. Right. But as a the end game is to get rid of the bacteria on your hands, which is what it does. Because I know a lot of people that their hands have gone very dry. Dry, very from dry. Using all of that um, yes. sanitizer. Yes. So this would be a good solution. Definitely, yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, what I would do if I was using it in my home is I would probably just um, use the 50 mil of the, of the enzyme and then the rest water. Just use that, spray it on. And I brought even here the um, the room spray, so it also acts as a very good um, room freshener. Doesn't smell like garbage. 
No, it doesn't smell like garbage. It's very nice. <laughs> Hand washed. If it's I could just man. put a plug for the window, all you need to do is just spray your window and then just take a $2 squeegee from the $2 <laughs> shop and you've got a perfectly clean window. It's so easy. So in e economical. And so economical. Incredibly economical. Yeah. Very, very good. So thank you, Cleek. Thanks once again. You're I think so this welcome. has been such a fascinating session and I'm sure everyone feels a little bit inspired to get their bottles um, <laughs> fermenting soon. <laughs> so thank you. Thank See you very you next much. time.